Singapore. Uh, so, Professor Eddie Glaude, um, you know, this, this election, tonight's debates come as both Clinton and Trump are among the most unpopular candidates, I mean, in decades in American history. And younger voters are reportedly especially dismayed by the state of the race. A recent survey, which was reported in the BBC, found that many younger voters would rather see a giant meteor destroy the earth <laughs> than vote for either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. So, Professor Eddie Glaud, can you talk about that? First, what Springsteen said about Trump's appeal, and then where young voters stand today in this race? Well, really quickly, I, wanted, I want us to be very careful in terms of how we characterize Trump. Uh, we try to characterize him in this way, and I think, for the most part, Bruce, Sting, Bruce Springsteen is, is right. But we, we, we're describing him, describing him in such a way that it almost distances him from what the Republican Party has been doing for decades. So, talk of voter fraud, this is the justification that was used for voter ID laws in North Carolina, in Texas, the attempt in Pennsylvania. We've heard this language before. And when Donald Trump talks about, look at Philadelphia, look at Chicago, look at St. Louis, I mean, that's not a racial dog whistle, that's a foghorn. He's saying to his supporters, these black and brown voters are going to steal your election. We've heard this before. When he talks about a liberal media stealing or rigging the election, we've heard this going all the way back to the 80s and even before then. We've seen it on the attack of PBS, on the attack of NPR, even the attack of Sesame Street. There's been this idea that there's a conspiracy on the part of the liberal media to, to kind of to, to, to block out conservative views. So he's just ratcheted up. And this question about the legitimacy or the illegitimacy of the election of Hillary Clinton, we've been experiencing this for the last eight years around President Obama's election. So the fact that you have this manufactured outrage on the part of Republicans about what Donald Trump is doing, he's just simply transporting what they have been doing over the last few years, over the last decade or so, into the presidential uh, campaign season. So that's the first thing. So we don't want to make that differentiation too stark. In terms of young voters, I think what we see, right, is the fact that they are in some significant way fed up with this duopoly. They're fed up with this two-party system. Many of them are. And they see that their life chances cannot be defined, right, by business as usual. So the Republican Party is bankrupt, right? The Democratic Party is hardly distinguishable, and they're bankrupt. And so what you see are, are, are millennials, in interesting sorts of ways, groping for a different kind of politics, trying to speak to the fact that their, their student debt right, has overwhelmed, right, credit card debt, trying to, trying to understand how they're going to enter into a labor market where they don't seem to have a place, even though they may have a college degree, trying to understand, right, what does it mean to imagine the U.S. as an imperial power under these conditions and to be wholly against this fact. They're growing up amid five wars. How are they going to talk about uh, that we've just went through or experienced the, the hottest month or, or year on, on record? right, in terms of our stewardship of the planet. So I think what we're seeing, and this is really important for the long-term implications, right, of, of the election cycle, I think we're seeing young people, I think we're seeing people of color, right, look at what's going on in this election cycle. And I think they're drawing a number of conclusions, but one conclusion that they're drawing is that it seems as if white people are losing their damn minds.